Now, if you're thinking that doesn't look normal, you'd be right. Oh, hi YouTube, how's it going? If you ever watch those shows like Super Nanny or The Dog Whisperer, there's a common theme, and that's it's never the child's fault and it's never the dog's fault that they're behaving badly. It's always the parents or the owner of the dog, isn't it? The same is true for glider pilots and students going flying. It's not the student's fault necessarily, it's usually the training that they have or haven't received. And in this case, we've got a situation where a student pilot looks like they're going solo in the twin for the first time, and they're just not ready to do it. Luckily, the glider wasn't really damaged, and the student received no injuries. And the sponsor of today's video is uh, our Pure Glide merch. We've got some awesome t-shirts and hoodies. So it's really hard for an instructor to know whether or not a student is ready to go solo. And there's a number of factors we look at. First of all, are they able to do multiple landings without any help from the instructor in the back seat? Secondly, how's their speed control? Can't be going wild all over the place with the speed. How are they using the controls and the air brakes and the rudder pedals? Are they under control most of the time? And are they able to handle things like a bounce or unexpected eventualities? So we cover all those things in our training. And we've got to make sure that the student is ready to handle them before we send them solo. As you can see in this clip, the student is opening and closing the brakes a lot. That, combined with the pitching up and down, is a sure sign that they're just overloaded and basically out of control. The problem is, we have a lot of things to think about when we're landing. For a start, you've got your pitch, forward and back on the stick, which controls your speed. You've got your roll, left and right, and as you get near the ground, you need to make sure your wings are kept at very level. You need to make sure you're lined up with the runway, and if there's any wind, you'll be pushed away from the runway, so you need to counteract for that. And if you're not lined up with the runway, you need to do a manoeuvre to get lined up with the runway. Air brakes. You need to be operating air brakes to make sure that you're descending towards your aiming point. You need to decide when to flare before you touch down. You know, there's, there's a timing decision there. And once you're on the ground, your steering mode needs to change in your brain from using the ailerons to roll the glider around to using the rudder pedals to, to steer where the glider is going to go. That's a lot of stuff. And quite frankly, most students can't handle it to start with. It's a bit like the old patting your head and rubbing your tummy problem. Try this with me. Stand on one leg and start rolling your ankle around. Then start patting your head with one hand and with your other hand, start rubbing your tummy. Now while you're doing that, start flapping your arms like a chicken. Finally, start hopping from one side of the room to the other. It's too much. Your brain just can't handle it. You just can't consciously think about all those things all at the same time. So you need to put some of those things into your subconscious. So once you've done enough flying, then things like stick movements and rolling and keeping the wings level becomes the second nature to you and you don't need to think about them so much. Then you can start thinking about all the other things like selecting a paddock or am I in heavy sync or can I play with my flight computer? And that's why nothing beats time in the air when training for flying gliders. The other thing that happened in this video is a bounce. Now this can often happen if you've got too much airspeed on, too much energy. The gliders are quite good at bouncing, they've got good undercarriage with the suspension, bounce back up in the air quite easily if you come down a bit too fast. We have to train our students how to deal with this, which is basically, one, don't panic, two, put the brakes away, three, get your speed right, settle the glider down, stop doing anything with the stick, just get your speed correct and leave it there. Then choose a new aiming point on the runway up ahead and then use the brakes to land like normal. And just do a second landing further up the field. And this is why we do training on big airfields with lots of space. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. If you've got any clips you think would be interesting to analyze, feel free to email them. I'll put my email address in the description below. And don't forget to check out our online store. And we'll catch you next time.